Welcome to the rocket profile of the GSLV Mark II, India's affordable trip to geostationary orbit. The first stage of the Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle, or GSLV Mark II, consists of a solid rocket motor core surrounded by four liquid-fueled, non-separating boosters. This is a unique configuration where the core burns out but the four boosters continue providing thrust for 50 more seconds and is due to the rocket being in development from the PSLV and sharing the same core. That shared core is an S139 burning HTPV solid fuel to provide 4,846 kN maximum vacuum thrust for 1 minute and 47 seconds with a specific impulse at sea level of 237 seconds. The PSLV uses small solid rocket boosters, but that would be insufficient to supply the GSLV with its required payload capacity, hence the use of Vickas 2B engines burning UDMH and nitrogen tetroxide on each of the boosters, each providing 760 kN of vacuum thrust for a total of 3,040 kN between the four boosters. They burn for 2 minutes and 17 seconds with an efficiency of between 262 and 282 second specific impulse. If it seems like it would be good to move the liquid engines to the core and just have two solid boosters on the side instead of only using one, that is essentially the configuration of the GSLV Mark III. To fulfill more ambitious requirements, the Mark III had to use S200 boosters instead of S139s, however. The second stage features a Vickas 4 engine with 846.8 kN of vacuum thrust burning for 2 minutes and 19 seconds with an ISP of 295 seconds in vacuum. While the stage has the same diameter as the second stage of the PSLV, it is physically shorter and features a more powerful and more efficient version of the Vickas engine. The real unique feature of the GSLV Mark II and what marks it as a geosynchronous satellite launcher is its third stage. This is a cryogenic stage with a single CE 7.5 engine burning liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen for up to 12 minutes with a specific impulse of 454 seconds. The 7.5 in the engine's designation indicates that it produces 7.5 tons of thrust, or roughly 73.6 kN, but the engine is actually capable of up to 93 kN. The CE 7.5 was developed in India. Initially, it had been planned that the Russians would supply the designs of the cryogenic KVD-1 engine, but it turned out that that would violate the missile technology control regime. So Russia provides seven completed KVD-1 engines instead, and these were used on the GSLV Mark I. Between 2001 and 2010, the Mark I had six total launches with a dismal record of two successes, two partial failures, and two failures. But the Mark II with the CE 7.5 has had six launches with five successes and only one failure on its first launch. Though the GSLV Mark II is an extremely affordable launch vehicle, it has not seen much commercial interest, primarily because the size of geosynchronous satellites have been increasing beyond its GTO capability of 2.7 tons. A number of India's own GSATs had to be launched with the much more expensive Ariane 5, leading the ISRO to develop the heavier GSLV Mark III. With that, thank you for watching this rocket profile of GSLV Mark II.